I wanted to go ahead and explain to you my brain, which that could be a week's worth of a video, but we're gonna we're just gonna go with what I got here. Hi guys, it's Misty and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Misty and I am a reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari, but I also own a brick and mortar antique store called Wildflower Antiques. That's where I'm at today. And I ran into Goodwill really, really quick before I came into the shop this morning. And I'm glad that I did because I found some cool things. The reason why I'm doing this haul today is because I purchased several things that I'm going to be putting in the antique store. Now, I've had a lot of people ask me questions and they wanna know how I determine what I'm going to put online versus what I'm going to put in the antique store. And I have a few pieces here that I picked up today and I'll explain to you a little bit of my reasoning behind that decision. So I wanted to go ahead and explain to you my brain, which that could be a week's worth of a video, but we're gonna we're just gonna go with what I got here. Okay, so these are the things that I picked up today. This is something I'm gonna show you is something that I'm going to put in the shop and sell locally kind of because it's a local piece. This is a plate. It's just a souvenir plate. I'm trying to see, Ooh, it's a Victoria Ceramics. There's the maker's mark on the back, a little sticker here. I paid $1.99 for at Goodwill. It has a little hanging hook right there. This is from Turkey Run State Park in Marshall, Indiana, which is about oh, maybe an hour or so away from where I'm at in Bedford, Indiana. So this is something that might, well, that would attract a local audience. Now, I could sell this online. I know that there's people out in the world that have heard of Turkey Run State Park. If you have, leave a comment before. I know my Indiana people will know about it. But it's a beautiful scenic part of Southern Indiana. This is something that I will list in the shop, I will sell it in the shop, because it will attract the local audience in here. So this is something that will be available in the antique store. Another thing that I'm gonna talk about that I got today at Goodwill for 99 cents is this cute little Shawnee pig. Isn't it cute? Look at its little face. He's a little planter and he is in great condition. He doesn't have any cracks, chips, or flaws in any way. This is something that I could sell online. They sell anywhere between nine and $15. Could sell this online. There are Shawnee collectors out there. There are pig collectors out there. There are planter collectors out there. So it, it fits in a lot of different categories. The community that I live in is a very rural community and there are a lot of people who collect pigs. So this is something that I will sell in the shop because I know that the market is good for it in my area. So this is something that I don't have to worry about taking pictures. I can sell it locally. This is something that will be available in the shop. Guys, another example of something that I probably am going to sell in the shop if I don't keep it that is this cute little pitcher. You can see it has this little kitty cat is the handle with his little tail hanging down. It's like an opalescent glass. It I paid 99 cents for it. So I mean, 99 cents, you just can't go wrong. So it's got this little cheetah cat. I don't know what he is. He looks like a little kitty cat to me. Uh, it was made in Czechoslovakia. It is a pottery piece. It's just something that I just saw it, I liked it, I bought it, and I'll figure it out later. But this is probably something that I am gonna put in the shop because odds are this isn't going to be, you know, worth more than $12. So I will put this in the shop because I think it will, I think that my clientele that come in here, this is something that they would purchase. And they want to be able to look at, look at it, pick it up, feel it, things that you can't really do online. Uh, I will try to find comparables to this, but I don't know. I just thought it was very cute for 99 cents. Yeah, so I got that. Another thing that I got was this Hager pottery. I took the tag off of it already. I, was, I got a little overzealous with my wanting to clean it. This is just a matte planter. Uh, this is something that I will sell in the shop because 
as you know Hager is a collectible piece people do like it but I'll be able to sell it in the shop for probably as much as I would be able to sell it online for and the, this will sell bet anywhere between 10 and 16 dollars so I will sell this in the shop it's a very mid-century piece which in my area demographically not a lot of people love but I do have some customers that actively come in looking for pieces just like this and um, I, I know that will be okay to sell in here. So that is another thing that you have to, that you have to think about whether your shop is or your booth is, uh, you need to think about what kind of, of um, customers you're going to be having, what kind of things are hot in your area. So my advice is to go to other antique stores that are local in your area and check out what they are selling. Um, and frequent them. You'll be able to go back and see what they still have, what's moving. You'll get an idea of what no, what is selling in your area. If you're in an antique mall, then you I mean you're already there. So just walk around and see what other people are bringing in their boots. You'll know what niche you need to um, fill in the gap with. And always, and you always have to buy things that speak to you, that you have a good feeling about. But that doesn't mean you're always going. You're always going to even make your money back. Sometimes you may lose a little bit of money. Now, we don't want to do that. That isn't the goal in reselling. But it does happen. Buy something that you really, really love and that you're passionate about. I do recommend that you do that, and let that light a little bit of fire in you to research the item a little bit. So if you're buying this royal this Hager piece, then you know look up look up comparables to it. Do a little bit of research, find out a little bit of the history of it, and it might spark a new passion for you to collect these pieces yourself. So this is something that I will be putting in the shop. Another thing that if I mean I'm gonna try not to keep this because this is this is the kind of stuff that I just I just love. It's just this little wide mouth frog. Now he does have a little chip on his mouth, but he was 99 cents. I mean, I had to, I, I love him. He has a little bit of a little bit of a chip right there too. Now I have sold these online for about 15 to $18, depending on their condition and their color. He isn't speckled. He's just your everyday, ordinary wild, wide mouth frog. This is, I will, I am going to go ahead and list, and I keep saying list him. I'm going to list him in the shop. That makes no sense. I'm going to put him in the shop and see how he does. I do know that these, there is a market for these, but I think that there's a market for these in the shop as well. So I'm going to put a price on him and have him for sale in the shop. These things are just great. I mean, how can you not like this, the guy? He's just great. All right, another thing. Now these are, I've had these before. I sold them in the shop before, but I always said, if I see these again, I'm gonna buy them again and I'm gonna put them online because I sold them in the shop. Well, let me show you what they are. They are these little Nescafe Globe mugs. I have four of them. They're a heavy duty glass. They are um, probably from the 70s, 80s. I don't think any earlier than that, but I could be totally wrong. They're all in great condition with no, you know, chips, no marks on them at all. Now, I think I sold the set of four of these. I wanna say for $10 for the set of four. I have seen comparable listings online for these anywhere between $25 and $35. So I'm gonna try these online and see how they do. The next thing I got, I got six of these, these little, now if you know the pattern of these, will you please comment? Because in my mind, I'm thinking I know what it is. I don't know who makes them, I don't know if it's Libby, I don't know if it's Indiana Glass, I don't know. But there's a pattern to this and I can't for the life of me think of it right now. So if you know, please leave them in the comments. But I got six of these. I love vintage drinking glasses and I'm torn. I don't know if I'm gonna list these in the shop. I keep saying that. I keep saying if I'm gonna list them in the shop. No, what I mean is I don't know if I'm going to 
sell them in the shop or list them online. What my brain is telling me right now at this moment is that I'm going to try selling them in the shop. I'm gonna give it until Christmas time. And if they don't sell by then, then I'm going to list them online. So we'll do this little experiment, shall we? Let's put these, I have a set of six of them. I'm not sure what I'm gonna price them at. I'll figure it out. And I will list them, I will sell them in the shop until Christmas time and we will see how they do. They're all in great condition. But they've got this really cool dots and they're raised on the inside. I know that there's a name for them, but I cannot for the life of me think of that name. Okay, the next piece that I got, this is something that is just interesting to me. I love pottery, I always have. I love jugs, I love Crocs, I like Shawnee pigs. I like all kinds of things, but I've been actively looking for and finding these little pottery pieces like this. Now this is from the eighties. This is Williamsburg pottery. There is the maker's mark on the back. Williamsburg pottery. And I do believe that says 1986. It either says 1986 or 1996. I've looked at it through the loop and I still can't tell the difference. So there is a pattern for this Williamsburg pottery, this little leaf. It's a very common um, motif for this. This is a little candle holder. So you would put your candlestick candle in there. And I just, I love these. Just the workmanship that went into this. It's just nice. It's a very nice piece. These are selling for 15 to $22 uh, I saw on eBay. And I paid $1.99 for it. I just really like this stuff and it has this, this this glaze on this natural piece of clay. I just think it's pretty. Oh, and this is something that I will be putting online. This is something that in my area, this is not a desirable piece. This people aren't going to come into my store in my town and look for Williamsburg pottery. No one ever has. No one's ever asked for it when they've came in. This is, I mean, it, it's while I love it, it isn't everybody's cup of tea. However, there is a market for these online. There are people that are all over the world that do collect Williamsburg pottery pieces. So this is going to be marketed towards them. So this is something that I will be taking home and putting it online and not putting it in the shop. Sometimes when you are a, when you have an antique booth or you have an antique shop, you're always looking for pieces to help you stage other pieces for you to sell. That's where cutting boards come in. Now this is a cutting board. You can see here, it's just a little round footed cutting board. I paid $1.99 for it. What I like about these, now I will put a price on these. Sometimes people will see the way that I have it displayed and then they'll want to take it home and recreate that in their home. But it's a really good platform you know, to make a little vignette, you can put it on a table and just add little pieces to it. I mean, this is not, I mean, I wouldn't do put in the egg next to the frog, but you, you get what I'm saying. So you can make a little vignette or little staging area for it. It just adds a little bit of height to your display. And this, I probably will put $10 on and I will sell this in the shop, but I will use it to help sell other pieces in the shop as well. So it, it, it's performing a double duty. And I think these are my two favorite things that I picked up. I mean, I really do love the little kitty creamer, little kitty creamer cat guy. I, I like that, but these I think are the coolest two pieces that I picked up today. And I'm, Probably, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. If I'm gonna put, put them in the shop or if I'm gonna put them online. I'll show you the still cool but not as cool one first. I got both of these for 99 cents. They were taped together. This is Wing Walm Villages number one from Horse Cave, Kentucky. It's an ashtray. It's just a little metal ashtray. The cool thing about both of these is look at the phone number on there. Do you see that phone number 3722? that shows its age. This was way before they had area codes. So this is probably from the 30s, 40s. Uh, it's just cool. It's black, it's got some wear to it. So this one, 
I don't know. I haven't looked it up at all. But I'm always actively looking for items with these four digit or three digit phone numbers on there. This one is the cool one. This one is a Chastain Chevrolet ashtray. Now, I have seen these online going i've had i've seen them listed and i haven't seen any solds but i've seen them listed anywhere between 34 all the way down to like 9.99 so i don't know this isn't necessarily a local local piece fredericksburg indiana isn't too far away if it was bedford i'm like if it was bedford where that's the town that i live in i probably would keep it but it has the chevrolet emblem on it it has the phone number is 251 this is a really cool piece. It's an ashtray, it's Chevrolet, it's Indiana. I love it. It's like a steel, look at the green color on the back. Oh, I just love this. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. I get a lot of guys that come in here, a lot of men come in here and they're looking for garage pieces. They have a man cave and they're car guys. So this is probably, something that I might try to sell in here for a little while. The kicker is pricing it because I know my customers well enough to know that if I put $30 on this, they're not going to buy it. So I have to take into consideration the time it's going to be to photograph this, to store it, to ship it, all of those kinds of things. It's going to go through my mind whether or not I'm deciding to list this online or to price it in the shop. So to be continued on that. So I hope that that answered a few questions. I'm, this is something that I'm going to do every week. I'm, I'm wanting to go around different areas of the shop and look at things and talk about why I'm selling it in here or maybe even where I thought, okay, I've had this for a while. So I think I'm going to take it home and list it online and we'll see how fast it sells. I think that's gonna be like my little project. And it's kind of fun. It's almost like, if you have an antique booth, I know that you probably do this, and this is really fun, is when you had something for a while and you move it to a different location and then it sells, like really fast. And it just, I don't know. I don't know why that's so satisfying. You just take it from one spot and you move it to the next. It's been sitting in here forever, but you just move it to a different location and it sells. I don't know. Those kinds of things are the things that just make me happy. So anyway, that is my little Goodwill haul decision-making kind of fly by the seat of my pants video. I hope that you like this video. I hope that you're learning a little bit something from this video. Now, I don't claim to know all of the answers. I don't. I'm learning just like you guys do. I've been around antiques my entire life, but I don't know everything about everything. So um, whenever I come across a piece that I'm not familiar with, I do a lot of research on it and try to find out as much information on it as I can. The internet is a wonderful place to do things like that. So um, I hope that you enjoy this video. Let me know if this is something that you kind of want me to do. If you want me to go around the shop and find some things and talk about my pricing, why I'm listing it online versus listing it in the shop. I've, I've had some interest in that. So if that's something that you would like me to do as well, make sure that you leave me a comment in the comment section. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of um, thrift with me videos. I do a lot of haul videos and I'm trying to incorporate a lot more videos in my antique store to help with people who are just getting started with an antique booth. So please make sure you give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Bye.